This is video two of five in our series on how to traverse, add and remove from data structures. In this video, we look at graphs. So this video covers how to traverse, add items to and remove items from the graph data structure. We introduced the concept of graphs in a previous video. If you've not seen it yet, we suggest you go back and watch that video first. So we've already covered the various ways we can create or implement a graph. In addition, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a graph, add an item and remove an item. And you can achieve this by either using an array in procedural programming or object orientated techniques. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by practical experience implementing them, as opposed to trying memorizing a particular code pattern. We'll start by looking at how to add an item to a graph. Well, there is actually no single algorithm for adding an item to a graph because a graph can have any number of nodes connected to other nodes. As such, there is no predetermined set of algorithmic steps you can follow to add a new item. It all depends on the graph you are using and the item you want to add. So here, for example, is a graph representing links between nodes for a social networking site. Imagine a new connection is made from Craig's social page to show he's now become friends with Andy. What is important here is having an algorithm that can easily traverse the graph to find a specific node, in this case, Craig. Graph traversal algorithms are essential for this process, so we'll cover those in more detail later. A binary tree, by the way, is a special type of graph, so there is an algorithm for adding an item to a binary tree, but we'll cover that in a later video. OK, so let's take a look then at how to remove an item from a graph. Well, the situation we just mentioned about adding an item to a graph applies to deleting it too. Once again, we can't supply a single predetermined set of steps to delete a node. It all depends on both the graph and the situation. Instead, we need efficient algorithms that can easily traverse a graph to find a specific node. Once again, a binary tree being a special type of graph allows us to provide a specific algorithm for deleting, and we'll cover that in the binary tree video. So finally then, let's actually look at how to traverse through a graph, outputting the contents as we go. So there are two well-established approaches to traversing a graph, a breadth first search and a depth first search. A breadth first search is a node-based method of finding the shortest path through a graph. It makes use of the queue data structure and the first in first out method. With a breadth first search, one node at a time is selected, visited and marked, and then adjacent nodes are visited and stored in a queue. We start by setting the root node or vertex as the current node and adding it to the list of visited nodes. Next, we visit every edge connected to the current node. As long as the nodes we find are not already in the visited list, we enqueue them. In this case, we will visit B, C and D and enqueue each of them. At this point, B is at the front of the queue and D is at the back. We also add each linked node to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So B becomes the current node. Note how the front of the queue now points to C. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Well, B is already in the list, so we don't have to do anything at this point. Once again, we check every edge connected to the current node. If a connected node is not in the visited list, we enqueue it. B is connected to A and E, but A is already in the visited list, so we only need to enqueue E. We also add this link node E to the visited list. 
we now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So C becomes the current node. Note how the front of the queue now points to D. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already there. Once again, we find C is already in the visited list, so again, we don't need to do anything. We visit every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. Well, C is connected to both A and D, and they're both already in the visited list, so we don't need to enqueue either. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So D becomes the current node. And note how the front of the queue now points to E. We've still got nodes to visit, so again we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in there. Well, once again we find D is already in the visited list, so we don't do anything. Again, we visit every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. Well, D is connected to A, C and F, but F is the only one not currently in the visited list. So we enqueue it and also add F to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So E is now the current node and the front of the queue is now pointing to F. We repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited node if it's not already in the list. Well, once again, E is already in the list, so there's nothing to do here. We once again visit every edge connected to the current node. And if any are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. E is connected to B and G but G is the only one not currently in the visited list. So we enqueue it and also add G now to the visited list. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set it to the current node. So F is now the current node and G is now at the front of the queue. We repeat the algorithm. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes if it's not already in the list. Well, F's already in the list, so again, nothing to do here. We visit every edge connected to the current node, and if any of them are not in the visited list, we enqueue them. Well, F's only connected to D. D is obviously already in the visited list, so there's nothing to enqueue at this point. We now dequeue the item at the front of the queue and set the removed item as the current node. So G has now become the current node. Note how the queue is now empty. As the queue is now empty, we move on to step six. We've reached the end of our algorithm and we can now output the list of visited nodes. A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So let's see how a depth first search is different. This uses an edged based technique. It makes use of a stack data structure and its last in first out method. Now, there are two main stages to a depth first search. Visited nodes are pushed onto the stack. And when there are no nodes left to visit, the nodes are popped off the stack. We start by setting the root as the current node. We then add this node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node. If any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. In this example, D, C and B will be pushed onto the stack. Now, you might be wondering, how do you know to add the items to the stack in that order? There is more than one valid output from a depth first search. That's the first important thing to know. You're typically going to see the leftmost path being traversed first in mark schemes and other sources. However, it's perfectly valid to follow the rightmost path first or any random edge. The result will be different, but you're still performing a depth first search. It all comes down to how you choose to implement the algorithm when you code it. 
We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so B is popped off the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is now pointed to C. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. A and E connect to the current node, but A is already in the list, so we only need to push E onto the stack. The top of the stack, therefore, is now pointed to E. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so E is popped from the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is back pointing at C again. We still have nodes to visit, so we repeat from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes, as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow once again every node connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. B and G are connected to the current node, but B is already in the list, so we only push G onto the stack. The top of the stack is now pointing at G. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node. So G is popped from the stack. Notice how the top of the stack is pointing to C again. As we do have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every edge connected to the current node, and if any of them are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. Well, G's only connected to E, E's already in the list, so we have nothing to add or push onto the stack at this point. We pop the stack, therefore removing C. The top of the stack now points at D, and we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes as it isn't already in the list. We follow every edge connected to our current node C. We can see here that A and D are connected to the current node, but A is already in the visited list, so it's just D we're going to push on. We now have D on the stack twice, but again, let's just trust the algorithm and carry on. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node so D is popped. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes, as it isn't already in the list. Next, we follow every node connected to the current node, and if any of the nodes we find are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. While well, A, C and F are all connected to the current node, but A and C are already in the visited list, so we only need to push F onto the stack. We now pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node, so F is popped from the stack. As we still have nodes to visit, we repeat the algorithm once more from step two. We now add the current node to the list of visited nodes, as it isn't already in the list. Again, we follow every edge connected to the current node, and if any of them are not in the visited list, we push them onto the stack. Well, F's only connected to D. D's already visited, so there's nothing to add or push onto the stack at this point. One last time, we pop the stack and set the removed item as the current node. So D's popped off the stack. The stack, you'll notice, is now empty. Here, we would normally go back to step two, but as all the nodes have been visited, we can move on to step six. We've reached the end of the algorithm and can now output the list of visited nodes A, B, E, D, G, C, D, F. As we mentioned earlier, there are other implementations of a depth-first search that are all valid, and other valid outputs from a depth-first search on this graph are shown on the screen now. So the approach we have shown you assumes a user-defined stack with an iterative approach. However, you could also implement the algorithm using recursion. Doing so actually simplifies the algorithm slightly as shown here. Once again, there isn't a right or wrong way to implement many of the algorithms you're learning. Find an approach that you understand and practice it. So on the screen now is a nice summary comparison 
of the two different traversal algorithms for graphs, breadth first and depth search, with some facts about each. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do graphs work? How do you create a graph? How do you add a data item to a graph? How do you remove a data item from a graph? And how do you traverse a graph? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.